After nearly seven years of running this channel, I'm proud to finally announce that I'll be doing the unspeakable and giving in to peer pressure. That's right, I'm reviewing a Radiohead record. Hey guys, my name's John, you're watching ARTV, and uh, yeah, I'm breaking out of the norm. This is unexpected for a lot of my viewers, I'm sure, considering I've made comments like, I don't really care for Radiohead, or I've never been able to get into Radiohead over the years. That's kind of my history with the band. Obviously, I had heard some of their singles, like Beyond yeah. Made It, and of course, Creep off of Pablo Honey. Listen to Kid A not too long ago, and finally started coming around to the band's way of thinking. I had heard some songs from that record and of course like Karma Police and other singles from OK Computer, listened through that one as well, and I finally decided that I would check out their new album, give them a little bit more attention just like they deserve, see what all the hype and praise was about, and with a moon-shaped pool, I'm kind of blown away. This is a great record. It's been nearly five years since The King of Limbs, the band's last studio effort, and fans have been clamoring for new material ever since then. Adams for Peace, Tom York, the lead singer of Radiohead's side project, uh, really kind of took off. They were doing a lot of work with that, some of his solo touring and writing, and some of these songs that are on a moon-shaped pool have been in existence as long as 1995. The album's closer, True Love Waits, has seen multiple forms, been performed live, along with tracks like Present Tense, which I will say sounded a lot better in the 2009 version that I heard of You Were Actually Sent That One To Me, and I'm probably a bit biased as a result. I do like the Brazilian influences that they kind of added in there, kind of the bossa nova feel and the samba influences, but I really like that stripped back approach. But complaining aside, I really do enjoy a moon-shaped pool. There's a lot of lyrical content on here that can definitely be seen as a result of Tom York's divorce from his wife, Rachel, of 23 years. In fact, we got a taste of this in the album's second single, Daydreaming, which in that outro, if you actually play it going the other way, it's back masked to say half of my life and I believe half of my love as well. Just a really intriguing thing. I had no idea what was going on at first. I had to instantly go over to Genius and see exactly what York was singing there. But as that instrumental swells, we see just so much emotion pouring into that track. He's given up 23 years, half of his life at the time, whenever he was 47, whenever they filed for divorce in 2015. He's given up half of his life to his partner and it almost seems like he wants to go back and experience all of these things again. Now, now it's not only lyrical content dealing with relationships, there's themes of nature thrown in here as well, and a lot of beautiful sounding string sections that really just shape up these tracks courtesy of the band's own Johnny Greenwood. Daydreaming of course being one of those, glass eyes, true love waits, he really just comes in and adds a nice touch along with Nigel Godrich. The band's longtime producer has produced seven of their studio albums at this point, along with extensive work of course with Adams for Peace, Tom York as a solo artist, they love working together and they make great music whenever they do so. Here, Johnny Greenwood just comes in with these awesome arrangements, along with working with that London orchestral choir, I believe it was, and just makes some of these tracks sound truly haunting that go with these themes of nature and the falling out of a relationship. A cold and chilling narrative drives much of the story of this record, and it seems as if Tom York is almost closed off and feels a little bit terrified of the general public. He references himself as being like a tourist or like an alien. He uses those themes to kind of put push the storyline forward, referring to things like panic attacks, being afraid to go on a train, and we see that as early as Burn the Witch. Whenever listening through a moon-shaped pool, I truly started to see how many bands really are influenced by these British legends. Radiohead have been a staple since the mid-80s. They formed in 1985, have been very consistent with their records ever since then. They're always, almost always, hailed as classics, and they just put so much effort into that, and I feel like that's rubbed off on some of their contemporaries. I look even at bands like Civil Twilight when I hear songs like Dex Dark. I see these truly haunting vocal performances that Tom York is giving here on this record. With cuts like Identikit and Dex Dark unleashing a little bit more on the vocal side of things and instantly getting stuck inside of the listener's head. I looked up the meaning of the word Identikit and it's apparently a process that police use to kind of put together faces and find out a potential criminal and I'm not exactly sure how that ties into the song's story yet. I've looked into it a little bit, haven't been quite able to piece it together. If you have any interesting theories, I'd love to see them in the comment section down below, because I've had a little bit trouble figuring it out myself, but I really do love this story of a broken heart. I really appreciate the steady clopping drums in the opening, then the 
elegant synthesizers that work their way in and then this majestic guitar that just sweeps in and then carries it out with a guitar solo on the outro of this track, lifting it up high before dropping us into another gem in the form of the folksy numbers. The numbers reminds me a little bit of the French duo Air and their album Moon Safari and that's definitely a comparison that took me a little bit to come to. I could not put it together and it drives me crazy having to wrap my brain figuring out exactly what that comparison I wanted to draw exactly was. It's a good comparison, don't get me wrong. It's just so warm and almost curious sounding with that bass line that goes all throughout with the progressing keys and the strums of the guitar truly pumping life into this track. Not to mention the symphonic elements that cause this song to come to a huge swelling point. Words just don't do it justice just how unbelievably good and euphoric this song can be. York has been pretty outspoken on his views on climate change and nature in the past, and he's stated that he was against writing a song about it because he didn't feel he would do it justice or he doesn't feel it would be good enough, but I feel like he proved himself wrong here on the numbers. Now let's circle back closer to the beginning of the record with a track called Dex Dark, which is easily my favorite song on this record. The song is almost kind of a therapeutic listen for me because I instantly connected with its almost somber and haunting feel. Something about the instrumental is just so alluring and before I drool all over this track and just go on and on about how great it is, I just want to sum it up in just a few words. Go listen to it of course because I want you to check this out. If there's one song on here that I want you to go and sample and try for yourself, it would be this one. It's just such a beautiful track. It's so beautiful upon the ears and that's really the best way to sum it up. I'm honestly kind of surprised at myself that I'm enjoying this many songs off of the record. I'm sure there's plenty of people in the comments already that are just offended as hell that I've never really been able to get into Radiohead's music because I'm probably just not on their level, but a moon-shaped pool definitely has so much to offer. I mean, I'm loving a lot of the tracks that are just in between. There's a lot of meat on the bones here, all the way from the opener to the closer and just in between. I'll get to a few moments in a minute that I'm not quite as fond of, but first let's talk about two more that I really am enjoying. Tinker Taylor, Soldier, Sailor being the first of those. I can't say the full title because I just can't memorize it. It's too damn long. I'm loving the kind of staticky percussion that opens this track up. A moody piano slices its way in and then lyrics about nature are kind of the center of this thing once again. I'm loving the incorporation of strings here, little slices of guitar that just add a little bit of extra life right in the middle of this track. There's not a lot of guitar, but there's just enough to really be serviceable and get the job done. And just whenever you think the song is maybe getting a little bit dull, that huge swelling symphonic outro courtesy of Johnny Greenwood just comes in and sweeps you off your feet. Desert Island Disc is another favorite of mine. Apparently it's a call back to a BBC program back in the day where people would be asked about their favorite songs that they could keep if they were on a desert island. If they got stranded there, what eight songs would you take? And I don't think that this song is necessarily about that lyrically, not in really any way, shape, or form, but this is just another one of my favorite tracks on here. I mentioned the folky vibes of the track, The Numbers. I think this is another one that kind of goes in that aspect, kind of down that road, if you will. Loving the strums of the guitar here, just hitting home lyrically, probably my favorite lyrical piece on this record. I just like that he's talking about coming out of this long slumber, being opened up. His eyes are open for the first time in a long time, and a lot of people are definitely already saying that this is about his divorce. I could see that being the case easily, and I like that he kind of empowers himself here. As promised, let's talk about some of the moments on this Radiohead record that just didn't work quite as well for me, and I think I'm going to start off by saying that I have a hard time paying attention to some of the moments here. It's not every single song, and it's not like I'm bored to tears here and there. That's not what I'm getting at at all, or that any one song just really jumps out as being a alarmingly bad because that's just not true. I think it's the main fact that some of these tracks just feel like they drag on for a bit long. Like on the track Full Stop, I don't really care for the intro on the track. It's a little bit too long and the bass riff gets very repetitive. It's very bass heavy and it finally breaks in, adds a lot of other instruments and I do really like the middle section of this track, although it does, like I said, stay a little bit too long for me personally, but there's not really any one song that I want to highlight as being just bad. I just feel like there's ones that have a few aspects that I don't really care for quite as much. I already mentioned the problem I have with Present Tense. It's a track that definitely is beautiful in its own regard, but I liked it a lot more and thought it was a lot more powerful as a solo piece. Maybe that's one of the two extra tracks that we'll get come September, the original Tom York only version. I do want to say this though, I really like the opening and closing moments here. They really set the tone for what's to come, ensuring that it's one that you'll want to leave on repeat from that opening moment of Burn the Witch that 
plows forward with its airy percussion and its themes of pinning the blame on innocent people, some insightful political commentary, really, and then all the way up to the closing moment, True Love Waits, which fans have been clamoring for to be released on an LP for years, really just stitching things up here with a gut-wrenching tale of a fleeting love. Just a really solid job. It goes out on that, mainly piano-driven there, and then straight back into Burn the Witch. I can assure you that this is a great listen, just through and through to leave on repeat. I think it's high time that I give more of Radiohead's music a try because a moon-shaped pool just totally blew me away in the sense that I just wasn't expecting to like it. It's a fantastic record. I do recommend you guys go check it out. I, I will admit that there's some songs that do hit a bit of a lull for me. I can't see myself coming back to them as much, but if you dive into the lyrical content of this record, I feel like you'll connect with it a whole lot more. The new album from Radiohead gets a strong four from me. If you've heard this British experimental rock outfit's Ninth LP, let me know your thoughts on it in the comment section down below. Maybe let me know what other albums you'd like to see me cover. There's a few that I've already got up my sleeve. Don't forget to hit the like button while you're here, subscribe to the channel, and of course, check out the links down below. The little annotations there will take you to another album that you might enjoy or the last album that I reviewed right here on this channel. If you're curious, support me on Patreon, the top link in the description down below. Help me unlock new series. It would be great if I could get more of you guys involved. If just a thousand of you guys gave a dollar a month, we'd hit the goals in no time. Thanks for watching. I will see you guys very soon right here on ARTV.